In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today we're looking at the third episode of John chapter 6, verses 22 to 40. And yesterday we saw how um, we are called to not strive for the things which perish. Today we're looking at the second half of verse 27. So the first half is, do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal on him. And so here we have this commandment, this balance of yesterday's commandment. Yesterday's commandment was do not labor for the food which perishes. Understood here is but labor for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you. So So what does it look like to labor for food which endures for everlasting life? And and what is this food which endures to everlasting life? We pray every day in, in the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. And yet we know from the Church Fathers that this bread that we are asking for is not the bread of today, but rather the the everlasting bread the bread which endures to everlasting life what is this bread but or, or rather should i say who is this bread who is this bread of life it is the lord himself we see later on that the lord reveals himself and says i am the bread of life this is in verse 35 But in verse 27, he's telling us to labor for this food which endures to everlasting life. It's very, very, very much in line with the conversation that he had with the Samaritan woman. Telling her, listen, you're going to drink of this water and you will be thirsty again. But there is water that I will give you that will make you never thirst again. So here we have the same scenario, but instead of water, we have bread. Now the word for bread in Semitic languages is so tightly connected for the word for life. And so this word, this bread of life is also a play on words. Uh, And and, and bread is, is this thing that keeps life going. So what is the commandment and how are we to obey it? The commandment is strive, labor, work for the food which does not perish, which endures to everlasting life. So what is that labor? They ask him that question later and we'll we'll see that in, in coming episodes. But today, let us simply focus on seeking the food that does not perish and that we must in our pursuit of this food labor it is enough to come to terms to understand that the life of a believer that the life of a christian though we walk by faith we are called to labor to strive the the church teaches us that that we have things called ascetic practices The word ascetic is the same word that is used for athletes when training for competitions. And we as Christians are athletes and we must labor, we must strive and struggle in order to receive, to receive this bread which is given to us by God. And yet there is labor, there is work. The athlete wakes up early and trains and lifts weights and makes his or her muscles attuned to the movements and motions of his sport. Well, our sport in the kingdom as believers is love. Our sport is self-denial. It is laying down one life for the other. And if the great uh, I mean, if the great competition, if the great event is the crucifixion, if the great event is the death of our ego, then we must train ourselves daily to practice this self-denial, 
this labor to deny ourselves, this ascesis, this asceticism, is no righteousness in itself. It is not holy to be ascetic. There are many uh, non-believers, uh, very stoic people, who are very ascetic. And yet that is not counted as righteousness. To fast is not righteous. It, to pray is not righteous. These are not things that count as righteousness. And yet they are necessary. And yet this type of labor, this type of striving, is required of the Christian athlete, one who longs for the prize, one who is striving for everlasting life. So then why do we strive if it is a gift that is given to us? And so just as the athlete trains their muscles in order to compete in the competition, and so we train our spiritual muscles in order to, ha to, to for the movement of self-denial, for the movements of uh, sacrifice to come naturally to us. And so we fast, we pray, we do prostrations in order to make room for God in us. We empty ourselves in order for God to fill us. It, the filling does not come from our emptying. The filling comes as a free gift from Him. But we are to labor for this food which endures to everlasting life. This food is the Lord Jesus Himself. He is the bread of life. And there is no labor that should be spared in order to train and to be able to receive the gift of the Lord Jesus himself. Have a beautiful day.